Good morning, everyone. Today we're going to continue our discussion on motivation. Remember, motivation refers to that which energizes and guides and directs our behavior to accomplish a goal. We've already spoken about biological factors involved in motivation. Today we're going to talk about some cognitive factors um, that motivate our behavior. And the contemporary view of motivation emphasizes the importance of cognitive processes. Um, before we get to those factors, remember, use your notes, and our objective here is really to be able to describe these four or five theories on what motivates and directs our behavior. So take your time, pause and rewind if you need to. So uh, back to the contemporary view, really there, there's two important factors when we talk about cognition and motivation. One is uh, how important a goal is for you, how important something is for you to obtain or stay away from. For example, if you want to get an advanced degree, how important is that degree to you? If it's very important, you'll be more motivated to attempt to achieve it. Secondly, is our confidence level. How confident are you in your ability to succeed um, and attain that goal that you actually want? So if something is very important to you, but you're not very confident in it, you might not work very hard to achieve it. So let's say getting your driver's license is really important to you, but you also don't think you're that good of a driver, so you're not sure if you're going to pass. You might actually be too nervous to pass that driver's test. So importance and confidence levels do interact. We're going to take a look at a couple specific theories now. Uh, the first theory we're going to look at is called the incentive theory. And you'll notice that this relates pretty closely to our unit on operant conditioning and reinforcers, especially secondary reinforcers. Uh, the incentive theory basically maintains that there's external stimuli that maintains or drives our behavior, um, factors out in our environment. And some of those incentives are based on our attraction to behaviors that offer positive incentives. Um, also, there are behaviors that um, we might engage in that we are discouraged from because those behaviors are associated with negative influences, uh, negative outcomes. So the value of an incentive, something out there in the environment, is influenced by cognitive factors. Do we like something? Do we think something will be good for us? And, and biological factors as well. So um, let's say, for example, a drug addict. Taking drugs is a behavior. And that might be motivated by biological factors such as addiction uh, and cognitive evaluations. Our thought that taking the drug in the past has made me feel pretty relaxed and non-anxious. So I might be motivated to take those. So um, incentives can be good. We, we, we're motivated to obtain them out there in the environment. We see something we want to, so we want it, so we'll behave in a way to get it. Or there's something out there that we want to get away from, so um, we're motivated to stay away from it. Uh, a related theory on motivation is basically intrinsic motivation and extrinsic motivation. These are two kinds of incentive forces. Basically, there are internally generated motivations, um, and we might be... Uh, motivated to feel good about doing something, which we might call an ego boost. We get satisfaction from within. Some of those things might be um, gaining confidence about doing something. Uh, we might be motivated to gain new knowledge or competence, learn a new skill as a result of the behavior. So we, we gain these good feelings inside because we do the behavior such as studying hard for a test so we feel good about it, um, or achieving something in athletics, for example. Now, there are also extrinsic motivators. 
Um, these are motivating factors that lie outside of you. Um, we might engage in a behavior to obtain a reward or avoid a punishment. So we might be motivated for materialistic gains like money, um, approval for getting a good report card. So we just want our parents' approval or teachers' approval. Or we just we want to avoid those unpleasantries like getting in trouble. So we want to avoid punishments as well. Another type of theory, and this is a little bit different uh, than the other two on motivation, relates to self-efficacy. Um, this is a social cognitive model based on Bandura's theory. Uh, we spoke about the social cognitive model uh, a little bit earlier in the semester. And this says that we are focused on our perception of self-efficacy. Now, remember, Bandura defines self-efficacy as an individual's confidence in their ability to execute a behavior um, or a course of action that will solve a problem or obtain something that we want or accomplish a task, for example. So our confidence level in our skills to be able to achieve a goal. Now, that may be confidence in the ability to solve a problem or um, unlock some um, riddle that we've been trying to solve. Um, we might have a high or low self-efficacy. So a high self-efficacy would be related to a strong confidence level in our abilities. A low um, efficacy might be a very diminished belief that we have the skills to accomplish something which might be a championship or success at some musical ability or athletic ability or academic ability, or maybe our ability to become a politician and be successful in life. Um, there was a study done in 2003, uh, uh, D'Amico, that showed a very strong correlation between academic achievement and our self-efficacy, so our ability to, you know, we want to be a good student, but do we really believe we can be a good student? And lastly, we're going to look at locus of control here. Um, locus refers to location. Where is the control for your success or behavior? Where does it lie? Is it inside of you? So an internal locus of control is the belief in your own natural ability. It comes from within you. So you believe your success comes from your efforts, um, and your stick to itiveness. The credit for something lies within you. If you're successful, it's because of what you did, your effort. So if you get a good grade, it's because you work hard. If you made varsity, it's, it's because you really practice hard and, and you put all your effort in. But also, if you fail, people with an internal locus of control also can be pretty hard on themselves um, that it's their fault that something bad happened. So if you want to strike that batter out and um, you do so, it's because you're good and you have the ability. But if they tag you for a home run in the bottom of the seventh and you lose that game, you can be pretty hard on yourself because it's all your fault. And grades, of course, we probably understand, you know, failure or not. Now, people with an external locus of control, they tend to believe that success is determined outside of them. It's luck. Um, how you deal with math is you get a lucky break. Was it just, hey, it was good timing. I was in the right place at the right time. Um, so when you're trying to do a math problem, it's, gosh, am I going to get lucky on that test? Uh, is it going to be an easy test or whatnot? So, well, before we go on to hunger, we're going to stop there. And um, hopefully you'll rewind if you need to. And... Uh, don't forget to bring your notes and review. So we'll talk soon about hunger motivation next. Thanks.